You've read the word of God. You've read the Bible. And the Bible declares, by his stripes ye were healed. And you've declared this and you've prophesied and you've prayed this over your life and you're still sick. You've read the Bible and the Bible declares that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are saved. And you've said the name of Jesus many times and nothing happened. You've read the Bible and the Bible says, They that believe shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And you've laid hands on the sick and they haven't recovered. Why? You're missing an ingredient. Welcome to Christ Globe TV, ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to talk to you guys about the missing ingredients responsible for bringing the Word of God to life. The missing ingredients responsible for allowing the transfusion of the revelation of the Word of God to bring forth the transformation in your life. What is this missing ingredient? Well, let's read Genesis 1-2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Did you hear that? The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, That's the key. The sponsorship of the Spirit. That's the missing ingredient. The Spirit of God. The Spirit. God did not say till after the Spirit hovered. When the Spirit was present, the speaking came. You don't attempt to drive a car without fuel, without gas. You don't attempt to boil water without heat. You need the sponsorship. So the Spirit is what sponsors the Bible, the written Word of God, to come to life in your life. That is why when God creates a human being and when God chose you out of the numerous amounts of spirits you could have chose, when God chose your spirit to be put inside a body on earth and to come here, he assigned a destiny to you. And when he assigned a destiny, he assigned a spirit, one or more of his spirits to work with you. Okay? So every destiny has spirits working with every, for every execution that you must do on this earth. There is a spirit you need to execute that execution. Every execution, every execution, everything you want to do on that is why God is a spirit, man has a spirit, angels are ministering spirits, devils are, are tormenting spirits. You see, you need a spirit to execute. That's why he breathed the breath of life into man. He breathed the breath of life. He formed a body and the body was dead. The body was just formed and he breathed the breath of life. And when the breath of life, when the spirit joined with the body, man became that's what he says. And man became a living creature, a living soul. So you can't combine spirit with anything and it will not become. You can't combine spirit with anything and it will not become. The moment you add spirit to a working or a speaking, it will become. So God worked. Then he added the spirit to bring that work to life. And God had the sponsorship of the spirit. And he said, and the spirit brought the speaking to life. So that is the key to execute. Everything you want to execute here, there is a spirit required to execute that execution. That is what grace is. Grace is the combination of certain spirits working together for a goal, for the execution of a dimension of God. Just like four. Four is the combination of two and two, or three and one, or zero and four. But you just see the whole number four. But it's, it has a combination. There are two or more things that can add up to add up to four. So that is what grace is. That is what grace is. Grace is the combination of spirit. So you can't tell me you have the teaching grace if you don't have the spirit of knowledge or the spirit of understanding or the spirit of wisdom or the spirit of counsel or any of that. You can't tell me you have the grace to make wealth if you don't have the spirit of wisdom. Because you read here in the Bible that God gave Solomon the wise and discerning heart the spirit of wisdom. And in the spirit of wisdom, in, in, in their hands, as the Bible says here, is honor and riches. So, every execution you want to execute on earth is in the hands of a spirit. 
You can't do anything without a spirit. You can't. You yourself are a spirit. You're able to sleep because you're a spirit. You're able to eat because you're a spirit. You're able to walk because you have a spirit. That is how we operate. You need a spirit to, to, to manifest an action. So, when you want to read the Bible, and you read the Bible, and you want the Bible to come to life, you need the sponsorship of the Spirit. You need the sponsorship of the Spirit of God. So, how do you, how does the Bible come? How, okay, how do you gain the ascendance into the Spirit to allow the Word of God to become life to you? So, if you're sick, how does the Word of God that says, by each time you were healed, or the, or the other... Uh, verses about healing, how do you allow that to bring forth a physical manifestation of healing to your body? If you want to lay hands on the sick, how do you allow the spirit, how, how do you gain ascendance in the spirit to allow that transfusion of the word of God to bring in the power that allows you to lay hands and the sick will recover? You must gain ascendance in the spirit. You must grow your spirit. You see, the Bible was written and inspired by the Holy Ghost. And it's only the Holy Ghost that can inspire the manifestation on the physical realm. So you need to grow in the spirit. The reason some of the prayers have not been answered is because we pray in the flesh, not in the spirit. The reason some of our declarations, oh, I declare this, I declare this by the word of God, and it's not happening, is because you're not doing it by the spirit. You can do things in the flesh or you can do things in the spirit. And when you do things in the spirit, they're life. They must come forth because God himself is spirit. So, when you pray, don't just pray for physical, don't just pray for things. Don't just pray, God, give me this, God, give me that. Everything you are praying for and everything you want God to do for you is in the hands of a spirit. And God gave Solomon a wise and discerning heart, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment is the combination of the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of understanding working together in one Simultaneous working together in a context, in a dimension. The same spirit a businessman uses to start a business and run a business is, in many cases, is the same spirit that a, an, an apostle uses to, to start a church and run a church. Same spirit, same spirit of wisdom. But in different context. Because wisdom is efficient. You take the same thing, you apply it in a different context, you get a similar result, but in different contexts. It's the same spirit. So whether you teach here or you teach there, you're using the same spirit. It's the same spirit of knowledge, the same spirit of wisdom, the same spirit of counsel. So whatever it is you want God to do for you is in the hands of His spirit. So let's take a look at what the wise man has to say to us here in Proverbs 3.13 to see what the spirit of wisdom and understanding has to offer us mainly wisdom so let's see what it says here let's see what it says here so this is proverbs 3 13 blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding for the gain from her is better than the gain from silver and her profit better than gold she is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her long life is in her hand in her left hand are riches and honor her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. So, here it tells us that the spirit of wisdom and understanding, mainly the spirit of wisdom, has long life. The spirit of wisdom has long life, riches, and honor. So what, what Solomon is saying here is that instead of praying, God, give me long life. God, give me riches. God, give me honor. There is a spirit that already has that. Pray for the spirit of wisdom. Pray for the spirit of understanding. It already has what you're looking for. So this is how to pray. Don't just go and start praying, God, bless me with this. God, give me this. God, give me There are spirits. That's what I want, you, I want to get you into. There are spirits responsible for every execution. You want a grace. You want to prophesy. You want to do this. You want to heal the sick. You want a grace. You want to start a business. There are spirits responsible for that. You want to prophesy? Pray to God for the spirit of prophecy. There are spirits 
responsible for every execution you want to manifest on earth. This is how to pray. So the, the wise man just taught us here, in the hands of wisdom, in the hands of understanding our riches and honor and glory. Then he moves on to say here in, in the verse 19 that the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. And by understanding he established the heavens. The heavens. By his knowledge the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. So what the wise man is telling us is telling us is that God executed by spirits. He founded the earth by wisdom. He established the heavens by understanding and he put things in place by knowledge. So when you pray, pray for spirits of God. Research, read the Bible. What do you want? Then look in the Bible for what those what what spirits are responsible for the execution you want. You want to be a great leader. Pray to God to give you the spirit of leadership. There is a spirit responsible for every every execution you want. So pray to God to give you that spirit and you will get that execution. Now, to bring the Bible to life, you must gain a sentence in the spirit. How do you gain a sentence in the spirit? One of the easiest ways is to pray in the spirit. Oruj, Karun, Kalas. Go brandi le hadigra astola marastigra tal. Koranjo savarna hekira astur. Prasigra tal. Pray in the spirit. Praying in the spirit will help you gain ascendance in the spirit, will help you be charged in the spirit, will help you grow in the spirit and bring forth the life that is written in the word of God, the Bible. It will bring forth those words to life and it will bring a manifestation in the physical. So pray in the spirit. If you can't pray in the spirit, that's fine. Pray in English. Tell God to help you increase your faith. Read the word and meditate. Now, when you read the word, you don't just read the word for knowledge. No, no. That is, that's another way that when you read the word and it doesn't come to life, this is another reason. When you read the word and it doesn't come to life to you and for you, and it doesn't make sense, this is the reason. You just read for knowledge. You want to read to know. No, that's not how you address the Bible. When you read the word of God, you must read to understand. You must read the word of God to understand. How do you read to understand? You meditate. You read and you stop and you meditate on the word of God. You stop and you think. You ask questions. How do you meditate? You ask questions. So this, so this. Talk to God. Meditate on the word. Just stop and meditate on it. What does this really mean? You wait long enough and you wait upon the Lord, you will find him. He will minister to you. He will open up the scripture to you. That is another way to bring forth the word to life. You meditate. You read the word and you meditate. You stop, you wait, you ask questions. And that's how you understand. The moment you understand, you move on. Again, the first one, you pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Then declare. Once you pray in the Spirit and you gain a sentence, you will know. Your Spirit will know. You will, you, here's how you know. Here's how you discern you're ready to declare the Word. And you're ready to bring it to life when you pray in the Spirit. You pray in the Spirit, you pray in the Spirit. Your body starts moving. Your spirit starts growing stronger. It moves your body. Your body can't stay still anymore. You get, long, you get louder. You get louder. You get louder. You get louder. Okay? Those thoughts that come, those devils that come and remind you of all your bills and all, all the distractions, they, they go. When you pray the spirit, you gain, you gain a certain ascendance. You're no longer worried about all your troubles and all your bills. You're heavy in the spirit. The moment you get to that ascendance and you feel the pull of the Holy Ghost, then you start to declare the word. When you declare the word, you're doing it by faith now. You're doing it by the Spirit. You will know. Okay? When you read the word, meditate on the word, let it make sense to you. So stop and read to understand, not to know. It is understanding that brings forth the life of the word of God. Listen to music. Christian music. Worship music. Music, powerful music. Music that were inspired by the Holy Ghost. And get, get in the spirit. Worship, 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 worship. Get in his presence. These are all ways to gain a sentence in the spirit. And when you gain a sentence in the spirit, you can then bring forth the, the word of God to life. 
Now, the four, another way, the fourth way, is by revelation. When you have a revelation from God, it can bring a word of God to life. You know something. You, you don't just speak the word bluntly. You don't just speak the word because just to speak it. I am healed. You don't just say, I am healed, I am healed. No, you have a certain revelation of God. It's called the knowledge of him. Revelation in the knowledge. Revelation is a dimension of knowledge. It's a dimension of knowledge. So, revelation in the knowledge of him. That goes with seeking God. Spending time in a secret place. Doing all these things I taught you. Frequently and consistently will help you grow in the knowledge and the revelation of him. When you gain a certain revelation, when you read the word and it opens up to you, it can bring a transformation in your life. So this is how you bring the word of God to life. And this is how you pray. Pray for spirit. So God, if you want wealth, you want money, you want to start a business, you want a teaching grace, there are spirits responsible for that. So pray, for, pray to God to give you the spirit. So pray. This is how you pray. So don't just pray for carnal things, for temporary things, for, for give me this, give me that, give me... No, 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 no. Pray whatever you want is in the hands of the spirit of God. So pray for that spirit and the execution will come plus more. So God can give you the spirit of wisdom and honor and riches and long life will come with it. So that is how you pray and that is how you bring the word of God to life.